Hello and welcome to this Google Hangout sponsored by FX Financial, the leading provider of independent financing for entertainment technology in the United States. I am your host, Stacey Harmon, and today I am coming to you from a very hot Austin, Texas, happy summer, chatting with Mr. Alan Gerritsen, CEO of FX Financial, and we are going to talk about why sales financing must, 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 must be part of your manufacturer's sales strategy. So welcome, Alan. How are you? Hey, Stacy. How are you? Hi. It's also um, very hot in downtown Austin as well. Yes. Um, <laughs> That's why we're inside and doing a Google Hangout. That's right. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump right in, um, so that people can better understand like your expertise and why you're qualified to kind of talk about this. What kind of equipment does FX Financial typically see financed? What's the average price point? What type of people and consumers and customers do you typically deal with? Yeah, FX Financial. Um, we're a bit of a, a boutique independent lender, uh, but we do um, finance a wide breadth of entertainment technologies. You know, under uh, you can think of uh, audio, video equipment, um, lighting, stage lighting, production lighting, studio lighting, film lighting, any type of audio, all the way from uh, concert line arrays to the uh, the boards that they use to program them. We do a lot of projection, high definition projection. Uh, you know, we do staging, we do tracing, anything uh, that you can think of uh, involved with uh, entertainment technologies. We do, including digital cameras for the film industry. Okay, great. And then do you work with the manufacturers? Do you work with the customers? What, what's your client base? Uh, I mainly work uh, with what are called vendor relationships. So we work with manufacturers and their resellers. That means when a manufacturer is selling direct to a, um, a rental staging company or a production company uh, and that company needs financing, the uh, manufacturer will uh, get uh, FX Financial involved in the transaction and will arrange financing. So the uh, customer can have their gear and the manufacturer gets paid. Perfect. Okay, so you've explained to me that financing is often part of the purchase in a entertainment technology uh, transaction. Um, what's the price range that really kind of kicks it into the need for financing? Is there an average price point that you tend to see this really kick in, or what's the range of that? Well, we, we see transactions anywhere from $20,000 up into the millions of dollars. But on average, our statistical average is you know around a hundred, a hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. So yeah, we we, uh, we see a wide breadth, but on average, it's about a hundred, hundred twenty thousand dollars. Okay, and what is uh, are lots of manufacturers offering financing? How's financing entering into the transaction, into the purchase? What's your experience there? Well, strangely enough, when I, when I started FX Financial in two thousand one, I saw an opportunity. Uh, because a lot of the manufacturers in the entertainment industry, um, they weren't using financing. It wasn't as sophisticated as a, of a tool as you see it in other industries, like the auto industry or you know, even the appliance industries. Those manufacturers really have uh, financing ingrained into their sales model. In the entertainment industry, which I've been in since the 90s, uh, it wasn't being used to that extent. And uh, 13 years later, since I started FX Financial, um, it's it's still very much underutilized in our industry. So the way it's coming into the sales process usually is the customer goes uh, to a manufacturer and says, uh, "I need $200,000 worth of equipment." The sales rep says, "Great, that makes my month." Uh, the credit manager comes in and says, "Oops, they don't have the credit line. How are they going to pay for it?" customer goes back to their bank or somewhere else, gets a loan, comes back to the sales rep and says, okay, I got a loan, you know, shouldn't be my stock. And so um, that's kind of the old school way of doing it, and it happens a lot in our industry. Okay, so if that's the old school way, what's the opportunity? What's the new school way? Well, the new school, the, the new way is to, um, for manufacturers to incorporate financing in their, in, in their selling platform from the very beginning. So you have you know price, packaging, you know the product, and you have financing, because when you're selling a hundred, hundred twenty thousand dollars worth of equipment, you know it's it's a big advantage for a manufacturer, ABC Financing, to our ABC manufacturer to have ABC Manufacturer Financing, so they can offer that to their customer ahead of time. And what that does is 
One, it prevents the customer from hanging up the phone and saying, uh-oh, I didn't have the credit line. You know, what am I going to do now? And that's an opportunity for them to go shopping. Uh, what you want to do is offer financing alternatives from the very start, uh, you know, so you create a captive customer and they don't go away and they'll come back. That's, it actually sounds like it's not a financing uh, hook, it's a marketing hook. It is a marketing hook. It's absolutely a marketing hook. Uh, it's, it's part of the marketing process. Um, you have to have something that the competition doesn't offer. And that something can be a lot of things. It can be the product benefits, you know, it could be a better product, uh, it could be better customer service, or you can also offer them painless financial alternatives. And we see that all the time in the auto industry. Can you imagine buying a car without, without financing or without seeing a, a financing offer on TV? There's a reason they do that. In the auto industry, um, you know, cars are now, what, $40,000 on average? One of the things that facilitated that are creative financing solutions. Okay, so that makes lots of sense. So explain that though. Uh, you know, why? Um, how does creative financing help the auto industry? Oh well, for instance, uh, can, can you imagine how many cars they sell if they require their customers to pay cash? <laughs> okay, that'll be forty thousand dollars. Write a check, please, or you know, go to your bank and come back. Um, they, they'd sell. 15, 20, 30 percent less if they require their, their customers to find financing. But lo and behold, you walk into a dealership, we'll call it the dealership A, and financing is all over the place because that they know that that is an important offering of their sales of, the, of their sales platform. With, without it, they're not going to sell anything on any given day. Okay, so that makes perfect sense. And so what you're suggesting is that the entertainment technology manufacturers and distributors need to offer that same edge. They need to offer the incentive to stand out from the competition, to incentivize more purchases, to make the product process just a little simpler and easier for the customer. What, what financing does and what it would do for our industry is you would sell a richer product mix, and by that, you know, more, uh, you know, the, the newest model, with the newest features, the newest, more expensive features, you would sell a, a bigger product mix. Instead of $80,000, you're selling $100,000 because it's just uh, you know, $50 more a month. And uh, you're insuring payment because you, you have a relationship with the finance company. And that helps reduce your accounts receivables because you know somebody's not ordering $100,000 and stringing you out 60, 90, 120, 180 days for so it's not just a sales tool, it's actually a collection tool as well for uh, the manufacturers. Oh, uh, a, a efficiently run internal uh, financing program solves a whole lot of problems, not just sales. Sounds like it, sounds like it for sure. Okay, so give me an example of a, you know, of how, of some ways that manu uh, manufacturers can structure financing deals to maybe meet sales objectives or, you know, do you have an example from someone you've worked with or can you give us a couple of ideas about how financing might be used to as part of their sales process? Well, we've, um, we've probably worked with every reseller and at some point every manufacturer in the industry. Uh, you know, going back, high-end systems, Verilite, when we were deeply involved in the lighting industry exclusively. Uh, since then, uh, right now, Barco, uh, the, uh, the, media, the big media uh, visualization company is one of our biggest clients. And they, um, they do, they've really um, adopted uh, the financial strategies. And what they will do is, one, when they come out with a new product, a new projector, and uh, the new projectors they sell are very complex, very well built, and very expensive. Uh, so when, when they have the engineer in the room to develop a new product, they have the marketing people in the room, you know, how are we going to market it? They have the sales rep, the sales, national sales manager in the room to make sure that, you know, is this what the market wants? And then they have FX Financial in the room hey, which finance, what creative financial alternatives can we offer when we roll this out at Infocom or one of the, or, you know, or one of the other trade shows? And, you know, it may be special financing. They may decide we're going to offer 3.99% financing on this, on this particular uh, projector because we want to get it into the, the customer stream so uh, everybody knows how good it is. So that's one thing they can do. Uh, for new product releases, uh, creative financing, Helps people buy early. 
they usually put a, uh, a time frame on it. If you buy it within the next three months or this quarter, you get this financing. So you're accelerating the, the sales thinking with the customers. You know, sometimes they hem and haw and they'll say, next year we'll buy it. But if we buy it now, we get 3.99% you know, financing, which is really good. What they also do is um, sometimes at the end of the year, and every manufacturer does this, if they have a, a surplus of product that they want to sell by the end of their fiscal year, you know, they'll offer special financing on it. 1.99%, 2.99% or whatever, just to help them to, to, to move that product by the end of the year. Great. And then, and we'll discuss what those uh, details in future sessions for sure. We'll go into some more details to hopefully give people some creative ideas about how they can uh, sell more, <laughs> basically, using this tool. Mm -hmm. But tell me, um, when they partner with a, a financing partner like FX Financial, what, what are they getting? What do you? What are the scope of services you're bringing to the table? Well, um, FX. Our job at FX Financial is to make it make a complex process simple for the manufacturer. Um, all the complexity is on my side. Is that's in, in my office and at FX Financial, because you know manufacturers are in the business to offer financing, take applications, you know, accumulate financial statements, financial disclosure. You know, in some cases, you know, look at personal credit of owners. Uh, that's not what they do. Okay. So first and foremost, um, what FX Financial does for for uh, manufacturers is we take all of that out of their hands. Okay. And we say to them, you want to do this. You want to offer financing. You want the ability to offer special financing in certain in certain circumstances. You want to get paid quickly. Okay. What we do is we go in and we put all those processes in place. We talk to marketing, we talk to their accounting, we talk to their credit managers. So they know, you know, if they get a PO from the customer and we're financing it, you know, a third party FX financial has done a lot of the financial disclosures to make sure they're good for it. And then they're more comfortable shipping it. Okay. So if you're shipping two hundred thousand dollars to a customer and, and, and you don't know their, their their financial wherewithal, that could be a problem. Well, at that point, we tell them we've looked at it, it's fine. But there are a lot of complexities to the, the financing that we take out of the hands of the manufacturers, and that burden is placed on us. Okay, so the, you know, it sounds kind of like a no-brainer. <laughs> There's got to be a catch. Is it expensive for the manufacturer? I mean, why wouldn't everybody be doing this? Um, no, and, and, and the cost for offering financing can be zero, or, or they can be, you know, relatively moderate. And the reason I say they can be zero if you don't want to offer special financing, if you just want to offer your customers, you know, standard rates, and the rates are pretty good right now, they have been for eight years, uh, then, then we'll just do that for you, and, and we pay your full invoice. However, if you want to offer, let's say, to the extreme, zero percent financing, there's a cost associated with that, right? Somebody has to pay that interest. Um, so, but how much? How much is that cost? Well, the answer to that is it's really pretty reasonable because anytime they're selling product to their customers, they're offering discounts all over the place. You know, the, the sales process is riddled with discounts that, that, that sales reps keep in their pockets. Uh, prepaid discounts, uh, quantity discounts. You know, there may be a discount because it's an older model. So, you know, before you, they could offer you know, a 10% quantity discount. Very, very seldom does a customer pay a street price. Well, we can help you take that same discount, or maybe less, apply it to a special financing program, you know, at, at a moderate cost, and you're really not losing anything. You're just offering special financing. So the answer to your question is it could be zero, the cost of offering financing, it could be zero, or it could be the same discounts you're offering your customers anyway. And that's a good discussion to have when you talk to a finance company. It sounds like, though, that the manufacturer is much more in control of the discount and really turning that discount into a perceived offering as a put and uh, incentivizing people through through using that discount to their advantage and part of their pitch. Well, it, it helps them uh, get a grip on their discount. Because if they're offering discounts for prepayment, for quantity, for older stock, you know, on any given sale, they may not know what it is. If, if they know that customer's going to finance it, it's 3.99%. Uh, they know what, what that cost involves. They can forego all those other discounts because, look, we're going to offer you 3.99%. Don't talk to anybody about other discounts. 
it helps them get a grip on, on, on their bottom line and the margins on their sales. Well, that's great. Uh, I think that's given us a really good overview. It's uh, clear. I mean, it sounds like a, a tactic that, uh, actually more than a tactic, a strategy that really can benefit uh, manufacturers, especially if they get started early in the process. What is the process to get started? What's a manufacturer need in order to begin? Is it a phone call to you? Do they need to get something organized? At what point should they call you? Can you give us a little overview of that? Yeah, everything at FX Financial, if we're dealing with a, a, a rental staging house that needs financing for $20,000 or a big multinational manufacturer that sells billions of dollars, um, everything everything starts with a personal phone call. Uh, so I would encourage them to call FX Financial and call me, and that's 512-481-0227, or uh, you know, visit the website that's on the screen, and all the contact information is there. And I will have a, a very frank initial conversation with them just to set their expectations and how to move forward. Okay, great. Um, well, I think uh, for this session, that gives us a good intro. And uh, we have many more of these sessions planned where we're going to intend to go into some details that hopefully give you guys uh, in the manufacturing industry some ideas of how your sales reps can uh, be closing more deals using some of the tools that Alan's uh, an expert on. And um, Alan has uh, certainly op told me he's open to a conversation, no strings attached. You know, just the, if you have any questions about this or want to get a feel for you know, how financing can help one of your product lines, uh, certainly he's able to give you, as you mentioned, a very frank discussion about that. Um, you know, whether it's him or maybe a bank that is the right solution for you, uh, certainly he, he knows how to direct you. So uh, that actually leads to one final question I wanted to ask, Alan. What is the difference between financing with an independent financing party like FX Financial and going directly to a bank? Where, what do people need to know about that? You sell FX Financial very well, thank you. Oh, hey, my pleasure. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> <a man. laughs> FX Financial exists because there's room in the market. Um, if if um, banks as good of, good of a job as they do, if if they were filling every need in the market, FX Financial wouldn't exist. And that's where we pick up the slack. I have been doing vendor relationships for over 25 years, uh, probably closer to 30 now. And uh, I give manufacturers a single source of contact. You know, this crazy expedited service, and and uh, I build the relationship the financing program around their needs. So that's um, that's an advantage that FX Financial has over the banks. Um, you know, we get to, everybody gets money from the same place. Unfortunately, you know, I can't print money over here. So, you know, I go to the, yeah, I go to the same banks that they do. I probably get a little bit better rates. Um, but the, the services we offer uh, and specific to the entertainment industry is what makes FX Financial different than if you go to you know, U.S. Bank, Bank of America, Wells Fargo. Uh, not that they don't do a good job, but we're more focused on the entertainment industry and we're very focused on vendor relationships. Got it. Okay, well with that, I'm going to close this uh, session out and we'll come back next week and talk a little bit more about overcoming some objections at the most common sales objections and how you can use that, uh, what you can say, you know, how you can use financing again more detail as a tool to kind of uh, build your business. And with that, Alan, thank you for joining us today and sharing your expertise. And uh, we obviously his website's on the right here. You can see it at the bottom, uh, fx-financial.com. And we'll post the phone number below in the comment area. And please feel free to reach out to Alan if you have any further questions or any topics you'd like us to address that are uh, well within Alan's expertise. So. Thank you for watching, and until next time, uh, we'll see you then. Thank you. Thanks, Stacy. See you next week. See you next week. Bye.